Oh, that's a great question. I, I totally sympathise with the person who asked this question. I love trees um, and can talk about them for a while. You know, they have trees on, on the island of Yakushima in the south of Japan that are about 5,000 years old. They're still alive. I had no idea you could be alive as any kind of a living organism. 5,000 years those things have been there. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> so, so many times older than the nation state that I'm answering these questions in right now. So uh, they're called Jormon cedars, uh, Jormon being the Japanese historical period of the time when they would have been saplings. So it's tempting to be a Jormon cedar on the island of Yakushima in the south of Japan. On the other hand, beech trees, just you know, there's few things more beautiful than uh, the first three or four weeks of the new leaf of a beech tree and you're standing underneath it and the layers of the shadows of the beech trees just sort of interlace so you get shadows of higher leaves falling on the bright that sort of bright lime green yeah. leaf underneath it acts as screens and, 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 and the wind blows and they just shuffle and move and blur and those are absolutely exquisite. I could just gaze at those forever. If anyone invented a screensaver of beech trees that does that, uh, I would never get no work then. I'd just go, oh, that's it. So yeah, uh, what a wonderful question. Um, and I'll remember that. Thank you. Yeah, it evolved from it. Uh, so thanks for going and thanks for remembering what great memories you have. Um, it, I, I wrote about the first ten stories but it didn't quite work because I, th I discovered we read short stories in a different, at a different level of intensity and attention I think than we do read a chapter of a novel even if it's the same number of pages. Um, in a short story, I don't know, you, you, um, the problem I had was that the reader never knew when to pay attention and know that this character might be coming back so I have to remember who they are and not when they were just a disposable piece of background uh, and so your sort of mental eyeball started to melt a bit uh, by the fifth or tenth story so uh, instead of 60, 60 stories over 60 years it turned into six novellas one set in a uh, decade between the 1980s and the 2040s. Um, so, yeah, it evolved. They often do evolve, and you have to let them. Uh, and um, I think the Picasso quote is, first I find something, then I go off looking for what it is. And writing can be rather like that. You just have this idea, you go off looking, and what you find might, might not quite be what you thought you wanted to do, or have to try things out uh, and sometimes they work and sometimes they, they don't and if they don't then you modify and adapt um, accordingly so they're more like sort of pumpkins that grow or, 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 or life forms that evolve uh, than they are kind of constructions of Lego or Meccano or something. Do kids still have Meccano? Probably not. Lego is still growing strong isn't it? The Lego movie. I'm rambling. What inspires me to write? Um, I'm not sure if anything really inspires me. I'm just unhappy if I don't. Uh, I, I've, I, I'm a nerd, uh, a nerd of plot and character and theme and structure and style. And if a nerd doesn't get to be what uh, a nerd wishes to be a nerd about, if that nerdery has no outlet, then that nerd is unhappy and sort of itchy. Uh, and, and that applies to me. So I, I, I write because um, a day when I don't write is, is sort of a day that's got a hole in it. it it's, it's, it's not a well spent day, I feel whatever else I'm doing, however worthy the cause might be. It, it needs some writing in it, otherwise it's not a proper day. 
uh, and, and I'm not happy with myself for having gone through the day without writing. So this isn't really inspiration, is it? This is sort of, um, I don't know, it's a sort of mental function that I have to exercise uh, or, or I'm ill at ease. When you're in your twenties and have no kids and, and, and basically don't have much to think about apart from yourself and your job, uh, that's the free flow era of your life. When you're in your mid forties like me, <laughs> goodbye free flow, it's gone. <laughs> uh, so uh, I write when I'm able to uh, around taking the kids to school, around doing the supermarket and paying the bills and the paperwork, God, the paperwork. Um, so when I'm not doing these things, then I, I sort of have a beginning time and I know I'm going to have to end at this point and I've got 90 minutes to work on this scene here. So now is when I write. Uh, it varies from day to day because the daily routines vary from day to day. Um, and uh, that is what I would fondly call my routine. It's the lack of routine. but. Uh, it's not necessarily a bad thing if you know you've only got 90 minutes and you don't stare out of the window waiting for inspiration or waiting for the muse. I don't have time to wait for the muse to drop by. I have to make it happen myself. So it doesn't necessarily mean uh, drop off in productivity. But um, yeah, that's my routine. My great ally in writing is tea. So I, I, I'll, I'll spend 10 minutes working out before the black tea or green tea or white tea or something weirder this morning and uh, if I want a slice of lemon with my old grey or a slice of lime with the Darjeeling and this is sort of my postponement diversion um, activity before a session and then when I've got my tea ready, I've had the same teapot for about 18 years, I've dropped it, don't know how many times, it's indestructible so far. Uh, and then the tea, and then I'll start writing. So the tea aspect is probably the only routine, ritualistic part. Uh, everything else is, um, I grab the time when I can. <laughs>